Hello, everyone, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about everything electrical and the future of the test and measurement industry. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to dive deep into some of the industry's biggest topics. Today's guest is Nicholas Vetterstrand, who knows his stuff when it comes to protection. In today's episode, we're talking all about line frequency protection and why it's become such a hot topic. So let's find out what's up with Nicholas Vetterstrand. Hello, Nicholas, and welcome back to the What's Up podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you, Darcy. I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, fabulous. Thank you. As you well know, because you're a seasoned guest on this show, um, we start the podcast with a set of questions that we call the power up questions. And it's to get your brain, get kicked into gear and to get you to know you a little bit more. So yeah. are you ready? Shoot. Shoot. Perfect. Okay. Question number one. Where was your last work trip? It was actually last week and I went to Paris to the Seagre conference. Very nice. Um, and what was the one takeaway you had from that? I would say that there's a lot of digital things going on in our industry, which is nice to see since we are in that too. Yeah, and your specialty. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And whereabouts are you based? I'm based in uh, Danderyd in Stockholm. Perfect. So Nicholas, it seems like frequency protection is a very hot topic these days. So can you tell me why that is? Yeah, it's uh, because the increase of the renewables and decrease of the larger scale generation. Uh, And when you have that stability you got in the past from the large scale generation, when that is removed, then you you have a stability challenge in the network. So the electricity you say is that the ultimate fresh, (laughs) fresh thing to get because it's more or less produced the same time as you consume it. So it's very difficult to keep the the protection or the the network stable Mm -hmm. and the frequency. So under protection, if uh, sorry, uh, under uh, production, then the frequency goes down. And if you have overproduction, then the frequency goes up. So it's very important to keep the stability there. And that's why IEC called for a standard focusing on protection because they did foresee that this will happen. And did that standard focus exclusively on frequency or were there other considerations at all? No, that's true. It focuses only on frequency. So it's the IEC 60255. Catchy, three, super catchy. Yeah, <laughs> that's 101, 181, uh, and it was released 2019. So the 60255 is the measuring relays and protection equipment. And the 181 extension is the, the frequency part of it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And what they really did was they standardized a formula uh, how the, the the frequency should be described in network. Uh, and, and thereby we know exactly, or the manufacturers that produces the relays, they know exactly that they use this formula to produce the, or to watch the frequency, so to speak. And, and when they use that, that means that they can use, be the same, or it should be the same behavior. In the past, it wasn't that like that. They, they kind of have their own interpretation of, of the formula. And then obviously it becomes different in protection. Uh, So the standard is targeting relay manufacturers and development, obviously, but it also affects the the testing. And how does it affect the testing? Uh, It's a couple of things. Since we have this waveform standardized, uh, we can use that in testing or should use that rather to say, because Uh, We want to reflect the reality, and this this formula was was produced just to reflect the reality. So it's a a frequency RANS, which is standard, when you're changing frequency, which is smooth. Instead of previously, it wasn't any rules how to do that. So when the testing, from a testing perspective, uh, many times you use steps instead, and that's not allowed anymore. Uh, Furthermore, it standardized the different number of tests you should do. Uh, and also how you should present them with different graphs. Uh, They also defined start time and uh, uh, operate time, which are two critical parts Mm -hmm. in the scenario. And how are they defined actually? So the start time definition, uh, we start with that one, is the frequency equal the set value and the relay start contact is triggered. That's the start time. And you do that with in different frequency uh, with different frequencies, so to speak, the ramps. So you, you ramp it with, at 0.5 hertz per second change, 
uh, one and two and five, and, and that's the standardized uh, different tests. And then when you do the jump or the sudden change, then you have 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, and 2 uh, to make the, the this test. Uh, operate time, that is uh, in, in ANSI standards, you call it trip time. <laughs> Uh, the definition is the uh, the time is the f when the fault starts to when the relay operates, uh, and also it should be noted that when you do this jump frequency test, you need to face shift or or keep the face uh, in track, so to speak. So it might be when you go from one state to another that you have to uh, shift the state you start in, so to speak. You got all of it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So you've yeah. spoken about the standards mm -hmm. and you've touched on how they might influence the actual testing. Yes. So how is somebody going to go about performing this? Yeah, that's uh, quite easy. You just follow the standard. That's why we have this. So they're there for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> no, the first thing to, to make sure of is, of course, that you have a compliant test equipment. And we do have the Sverker 900, mm -hmm. which has this smooth ramping we talked about earlier. That's that has, is the big or largest change, I should say. Uh, so when you do frequency ramp, you use the, the ramp instrument in this worker. Uh, so you have a start value, ramp value, and a stop value. And then the relay start contact should start the timer, and the relay upper contact stop the timer. And then you, you just a normal, do a normal ramp test. So you inject and get the readings. And you do that 10 times to get a minimum, maximum, and an average. Uh, then we go to the frequency jump test, and there you have the pre-fault fault instrument instead. So you have a set value first for the pre-fault, and then you inject the fault. Uh, and you do that within, uh, the pre-fault should be within normal operation, and the fault frequency should be the desired value, which is the formula, is the frequency for the fault should be the frequency set uh, plus the frequency test level. So uh, again, here it might be necessary to change the phase level when you change state, so it doesn't be any, any interruptions in the frequency. It should be smooth when changing mm -hmm. the state. Uh, then you connect the co uh, operate contact to binary one to stop the timer, and then you inject to get the readings. Again, you do it 10 times, you get a minimum, maximum, and an average. Sounds simple. It sounds so <laughs> simple. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that, though, and taking us through the whole process. Mm. And frequency ramp sounds like the most realistic option to reflect the reality. Um, but why is both ramp and jump sudden changes valid? And I guess, like, how can frequency jump? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, normal situation when you have a, a high inertia in the system, then then the frequency never jumps, and that's mm -hmm. why they made this standardized frequency change because it's always a slower change instead of a jump. But there are actually systems. Uh, if we take the examples uh, of a solar farm or a solar panel, there you can actually have the the frequency to jump if the uh, the regulation is not not working. Uh, properly, you can see the the energy from an energy perspective. The sun can be very bright, and you have high energy, and suddenly it's clouds or whatever uh, covering, uh, and then the the uh, energy goes away, and then it comes back again. And so then you have re could yeah. have really jumps in in energy production, which could lead to. Uh, frequency jumps. That's why they are still there. Mm -hmm. And frequency protection, you know, isn't a new thing by any standard. So how does this work with kind of some of the older relays that are in circulation? Yeah, the, the older generators, as you say, frequency is is fundamental mm. with AC and has been there for a long, long time. But the, the relays up to before the standard was developed without the standard, which meant that the different manufacturers, they made their own, uh, they, they looked at the, the frequency, how, how could it be calculated, and made their own calculations to, to reflect the natural behavior, uh, which meant that the algorithms in the, those relays are different. It's not based on the same formula. Mm -hmm. So it's natural to have different response from different behaviors, even though it's not huge difference since everybody was looking at that frequency. That's mm -hmm. what we should look at it. But still, you see uh, f differences between manufacturers, even you, if you use the, the same settings. Mm -hmm. So this standard would obviously 
do what it's there for to to harmonize the the uh, population mm -hmm. and most of the relays the older relays are not designed to really comply with this standard so how can it be beneficial to test them in accordance with that standard yeah that's true they, they uh, are developed before so how mm. could they yeah they <laughs> be, can't predict the future no exactly <laughs> uh, but I, I think there's a benefit to to test according to the standards is the standard formula and how that's developed was to reflect the reality in a, in a better way uh, and it's good to test how the reality would work and then you can get a confirmation how the relay would work in a realistic uh, realistic uh, situation so to speak so it's good to know uh, how the relay would react in, in case of a fault. And also it's good to know the difference between brands because there might be some brands that which works perfectly in some applications, mm -hmm. but others might have deficiencies or maybe you have a perfectly working, but you need a backup and you need to fi fi figure out which one fits better. So... There are reasons to find to know your population. Yeah, you've given us a great in-depth look at kind of frequency protection, the testing methodologies, and the standards in a very short period of time. So, if you wanted to give maybe a key takeaway to the audience today, or just like kind of the main thing, what would you say is? I would say that uh, the network stability that that's the concern with the new. Uh, installations of renewables and decrease of, of a more stable generator generation generating sources so the this standard was developed due to that and i, I think it's uh, important that we start to inherit and, and try the network or test your network so you get in control over your protection so that's one key thing to start applying and using this even though it might not be applicable for a long time uh, then, of course, to, to use test equipment which are compliant with the standard is important. Uh, so, so that's another thing. The smooth ramp is probably the mm -hmm. best example uh, that which was this huge, huge change. And then also the standardized frequencies. That's also mm -hmm. good to follow. Yeah. Uh, we have the ramp and the jump tests. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, that, that's good to know as well and follow the standard. But ju just if you follow it, you will you will do them. Yeah, can't go wrong if you follow no, the standard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, then to evaluate brands, the last point we discussed there, I think it's important to understand your protection and, and uh, to really see if it works in this application or and what backups do I have and so on. It might lead to changes that you want to update mm -hmm. your, your current protection because you want to stay protected, right? So to measure is to know uh, and stay well protected. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't have said that better myself, Nicholas. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for talking to us today about frequency protection. I really appreciate you coming on and having a chat with us. Thank you so much, Darcy. Perfect. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.